In this video, I will be sharing a very simple yet powerful secret on price action trading that will change the way you view the markets. To be honest, it's not just a simple trick or something, but it is an entirely different approach towards price action trading. If you watch this video carefully and understand the concepts, you will be able to spot out market reversals like this long before they occur. But before we start, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss on any of our new videos. With that being said, let's get into today's video. When we talk about price action trading, we are essentially talking about a trading approach that uses raw price data to analyze the historic price behavior. Price action traders analyze the historic price data to predict the future price behavior. A major component of price action trading is support and resistance levels. Price action traders heavily rely on support and resistance levels to identify trading opportunities. A support level is a price level where buyers come in and push the prices upwards. Similarly, a resistance level is price level where sellers come in and push the prices downwards. Support and resistance are really powerful when it comes to identifying market reversal points. But every support and resistance level might not be equally powerful. While the market may respect major support or resistance levels, it may not respect the minor ones. And in some extreme market conditions, the market may not respect any support or resistance level. A lot of traders find it very difficult to trade using support and resistance levels. Through my experience and research, I have discovered a secret. This secret helps me identify powerful areas on the price chart that have the capability to reverse the markets. I like to call these areas as value zones. To be honest, the concept of these value zones is derived from the market profile indicator itself but my interpretation is very different from that of the indicator. With that being said, let's understand these value zones. To understand the value zones, we must first understand the reason behind any price move. I know this part of the video might seem very basic, but stick around, it will change the way you perceive the market movements. So my question to you is, what is the objective of any market? The objective of any market is to facilitate trade. The goal of the markets is to find a price where buyers and sellers agree to exchange the asset. Let's understand how the markets move with an example. On this chart, when the market was trading around this price, the buyers were willing to buy, but the sellers were not willing to sell. Therefore, the buyers take the prices higher in order to entice the sellers to sell. Therefore, we see an uptrend. Remember, in an uptrend, the buyers are willing to buy, but the sellers are not willing to sell. Therefore, the prices go up. Then, once the buyers and sellers find a price that is attractive to both of them, they start to exchange. The exchange between the buyers and sellers is visible as the price goes sideways for a couple of candles. When the market is in a sideways range like this, it signifies that the buyers and sellers have found value at this price. They both see the current price as a fair price of the asset. Therefore, the buyers are buying when the price reaches this lower boundary and the sellers are selling when the price reaches the upper boundary of the range. This area is what I call as the value zone. We will learn how to use them very shortly. But for now, let's continue through the chart. Soon enough, we see that after a certain point, the buyers no longer see the current price as fair value. Therefore, they do not buy when the price reaches the lower boundary. As a result, the sellers push the price downwards to attract new buyers. Remember, in a downtrend, the sellers are willing to sell, but the buyers are not willing to buy. Therefore, the prices go down. Now that we have understood the price action, let's bring our focus on the concept of value zones. Value zones are nothing but a price area where buyers and sellers exchange a big quantity of the asset. 
I have noticed that once the price breaks out of the value zones, they act as a major level of support and resistance. Let me show you with an example. On this chart, during this particular time period, we see that the market traded sideways without any trend. It created this price range. So, we can say that the price has found value. The buyers and sellers were in agreement that this range was a fair value of the asset for that day. Therefore, they exchanged huge quantities of the shares in this range. The sellers sold at the upper boundary, while the buyers bought at the lower boundary. So we mark this as a value zone. Later, on the very next day, the price gaps down and breaks below the value zone. On the third day, the price comes back near the value zone and immediately faces a resistance and it tanks downwards. The value zone acts as a major resistance and the price immediately trades lower. The question is, why did this happen? To understand this concept, we need to think through the minds of buyers and sellers. As I mentioned before, a huge quantity of shares we bought and sold inside this value zone. So we can say that a lot of buyers and sellers will be sitting on their positions and watching the prices carefully. When the price breaks lower, the buyers who bought in the value zone will be sitting in a losing position. As the price trades lower their losses will grow bigger and bigger. But, not all of them will have the courage to cut their positions and accept their loss. They will be waiting for a small up move so that they can book losses at a reduced amount. Therefore, when the price reaches back to the value zone, they are now sitting at a break-even position. They are neither at a loss or at a profit. They will thank their gods for giving them the opportunity to reduce their losses to virtually nothing, and they will sell their positions. When they sell their positions, their sell orders create a bearish pressure and move the prices lower. So this was the story from the buyer's side. Now let's look at the story from the seller's side. When the price was trading in the value zone, a lot of sellers entered short positions. Then the price broke below the value zone, and they started making profits. As the market starts to trade lower, their profits start to grow. The greed starts to step into the minds of the sellers. They will think to themselves, if I had sold a bigger quantity, I would be sitting in a huge profit. They will tell themselves, I should have sold more. When the price comes near the value zone, the sellers will see it as an opportunity to create new short positions. They will think that the market has given them the opportunity to create a bigger short position before the price moves much lower. So they will take that opportunity and short the markets. Notice how buyers and sellers both sold at this price. The buyers created sell orders to exit from their positions, while the sellers created sell orders to make new positions. In the end, a lot of sell positions are created here, and as a result, the price tanks down. So, we can say that when the price tests the value zone from below, the value zone will act as a resistance. On the other hand, if the price tests the value zone from above, it will act as a support. Here is an example. On this chart, we see that the price initially made this strong up move as the buyers were in search of the sellers. Around this price area, the sellers come in and the price creates this range. The buyers and sellers perceive this price range as the fair value of the asset. Therefore, the market goes sideways for a few candles. The buyers buy at the lower boundary, while the sellers sell at the upper boundary. Then the price breaks above the value area and it starts to trade higher. When this happens, the sellers who sold here start to lose a lot of money. They wait for a down move in price so that they can exit their positions at a reduced loss. When the price finally comes back near the value zone, the losses of the sellers reduce and at this point the sellers are at break even. They thank their gods for providing them with an opportunity to cut their losses and they start to exit their positions. To exit their positions, they have to buy back the shares that they sold before. In other words, they create buy orders to square off their sell trades. 
thereby orders create a bullish pressure that helps the prices to go up again. Now, let's look at this chart from the perspective of the buyers. When the price breaks above the value zone, the buyers start to make profit. They start to feel the greed. They regret not buying the shares in huge quantities. If they would have done so, they would be sitting in a bigger profit. So, they beg for the market to give them the opportunity to buy again at the value area. And as the price pulls back to the value area, it becomes an opportunity for the buyers to buy more. The market is giving them a chance to buy at a discounted price. So they take this opportunity with both their hands and buy at this price. As a result the buying of sellers and buyers creates a bullish pressure that makes the market go up. In other words, the value area provides support when the price tests it from above. So I hope that you have understood how the value zones work as support and resistance levels. Let's quickly go through some examples so that you can understand how to trade them. A quick note before we jump in the charts. You can trade the value zones on any time frame, but value zones on higher time frames will be stronger than the value zones on lower time frames. Here is the first example. On this chart, we see that initially the price created this down move and it found value in this area. The buyers come in and buy at the lower boundary, while the sellers come in and sell on the higher boundary. As a result the price forms this sideways range. Then, the price breaks below the range and trades lower. At this point, we mark the value zone with a rectangle. As the price has broken below the value zone, we can expect the price to find resistance at the value zone in the future. We see that soon after the breakout, the price makes a pullback up to the value zone. Now, we expect the price to face resistance at the value area. So it is a good idea to sell. You can use candlestick patterns to pick out your entry. For example, on this chart, we see this doji candle form right at the value zone. So we sell here. And as you can see, the market faced rejection twice at the value zone before finally making a lower move. Here is another example. On this chart, we see that the price creates this tight value zone as these several tight range candles form one after the other. Then, the price breaks above the value zone and trades higher. At this point, we mark the, the value zone and we know that if the price comes back near the value zone, the price might face support and turn back upwards. So, it will be a good trade idea to buy near the value zone. Here we see that the price makes a pullback up to the value area. We now expect the price to find support and move up. We can create a short-term trend line and wait for its break to enter. On this candle, the price breaks the trend line and we enter a buy trade. And as you can see, the price makes a strong up move after our entry. So this is how you should trade value zones. I suggest you to create your own strategy and try to combine it with value zones to become a better trader. That brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss on any of our new videos. See you soon.